Today I'm going to show you how I made this little um, gift box. It's a triangular box, it will stand on its own or you can hang it from um, a Christmas tree. It opens by pulling the base down and you can put your little gift or chocolate treat in there. To close it you just squeeze the sides gently and then give it a little push and it's now nice and secure so your gift isn't going to fall out the bottom. Now I've made two um, different colourways for these, one traditional in green and red and one contemporary in the blues and I'm using these as one of my swaps for our forthcoming convention which is being held next month in Brussels. I've also um, made a larger one and for this one I've doubled up on all the measurements I used for my original box. Okay, so again it will stand on its own. I haven't put um, ribbon through the top this time because I um, felt that it would probably be much too heavy to go, much too big to go on a tree. But it opens in the same way. You can get a nice large gift in there and then again to close it you just squeeze the sides and give it a little push. And then also for my swaps, I've been making these um, really sweet, tiny little ones that again you can hang on the tray. Now these are exactly half the size of my original one. Okay, so you can play around with the sizes that I'm going to give you and make them any size you want. Um, these I'm just going to put a, a tiny little chocolate tree in there. Okay, so let's get started. To start off you need um, a piece of crumb cake cardstock. This measures five and three quarter inches by five and a half inches and you place that in your scoreboard so uh, the longer side is running across the top, the five and three quarter inch side. And you want to score down a half inch, two and seven eighths inches and also five and a quarter inches. So now what we've got, we've got a half half inch section on each side and we've got a score line going through the middle of our cardstock. If you rotate your cardstock so your five and a half inch side is now running across the top. This time we also want to score at the midpoint which is now two and three quarter inches but we only want to score through that top and bottom half inch section. Okay. Now I've just marked my board at that point using um, one of our dazzle markers just to make it easier and quicker for me Okay, to score that bottom section. But if you didn't want to do that, just rotate your cardstock again and then, and then score it. Now what you do want to do is mark a groove on um, sort of the right hand side of the board. I've chosen to mark my six inch one just because it's the halfway point, but you can use any of these. You just want to keep away from the left hand side where you've got a raised um, edge because it will just get in the way. Now, if you mark your board like I've done, if you want to erase that line at a later date, if you use your stays on cleaner and a cotton bud, that'll um, clean it up lovely. Okay, now, I've got my half inch section at the top and the bottom and I've also got my um, halfway score line running horizontally. So these are my little half inch score lines that I've just made. Now you want to line those up with the marked groove and position your stylus at the base of it so it's sat on the horizontal score line as well. Then if you swing your cardstock to the left Okay, you want to line up the bottom horizontal score line with that same groove. Make sure you don't line up the bottom corner of the cardstock, okay, because your box it won't work, it'll be out. So line up that bottom score line, make sure it's sat in that groove. Hold your cardstock in place and score down. Reposition your stylus, swinging your cardstock to the right. Again, line up that horizontal score line with the marked groove and score down. Okay, so now we've got a large triangle scored on our cardstock. If you spin your cardstock around, because we want to repeat that whole thing with the other side, 
position your half inch score line with your marked groove and then position your stylus at the base okay that enables your cardstock to swing so if you swing it to the left and then position that bottom horizontal line and score down reposition your stylus swing it to the right and score down okay and that's our scoring complete the next thing I want to do is stamp the background and I'm using our Whisper White craft ink for that together with a um, sponge dauber. So I load up my sponge dauber with ink and then just stamp on my cardstock. Because I wanted to make so many of these for um, my convention swap I needed a quick method of stamping my background so this was perfect really. You don't need to reload your dauber each time like you would a stamp. So you can do it quite quickly. Now because we've used um, the craft ink it does take a little while to dry um, so you want to leave it or you can blast it with a heat gun which will speed it up a little bit. The next thing we want to do is some cutting. Now because you can't see the score lines very well on this cardstock with the camera I've drawn up a template. Um, if you hold your cardstock so you've got the two half inch sections on the side you should be able to see a diamond shape in the middle and a large triangular shape on the top and the bottom of your cardstock and it's these two we want to remove first of all. Right, if you take your scissors and just cut along the score lines to remove those sections Now, the next thing to do, um, on the side we've got two sections on each side. Now, we want to remove either the two bottom tabs or the two top tabs. Okay, it doesn't matter which you do, just take two of them away. So I'm going to take away the bottom ones, so again, just cut along the score lines now your cardstock should look like that okay now the next thing um, we have to do it doesn't matter which side you do this on okay just choose one I'm going to take it from the right hand side and just take a little piece out of the top of that side tab. Once you've done that, you can notch the sides of that tab. So it looks like that. Then on the opposite side, you want to notch the bottom of the tab and also the top, but when you come to do the top, if you do it at a more acute angle than you've cut the others, this will just ensure that when we join the box together, this piece here will not get in the way of that point, okay? And it'll just be um, easy to put together. All right, now once you've done that, we need to round off the points on this side. So on the side where you took that top piece out, we want to round the points. So if you fold your side tab back out the way and insert the point into your corner rounder. Now you want to um, line up the side edges of that point with the base of the curve of the punch. Does that make sense? If I can show you. Okay and then just punch it and that will just round that off nicely. Then you want to repeat that on the bottom point. So it's on the same side. We want to put that point 
into the punch and again I push it in until the side edges of my cardstock meet the bottom points of that curve on the point on the punch okay and then just punch it the next thing we want to do is to mark the positions for the holes for our baker's twine now you've got your two rounded points here on this side it's on the opposite side that your holes need to be punched now here you've got three triangular pieces and the marks need to go on the two outside triangles towards the centre so if you just mark the position with a pencil and then we can use the eighth of an inch circle punch just to punch those okay then we need a piece of baker's twine and I'm using Bermuda Bay it's about 20 centimeters long which is about 8 inches that needs to go through the back towards the front and then back through the other hole so we've got a loop on the front then if you get your ends together and just tie a knot as close to the ends as you can get make it nice and tight cut off any excess then pull that loop through to the front and tie another knot it's a bit tricky because you've got the cardstock in the way but tie another knot as close to that cardstock as you can get it and then we're ready to decorate. I'm using the Festival of Trees photopolymer stamp set to do my decoration and I'm going to stamp my plain tree first of all in pool party and then I'm going to stamp the dots using Bermuda, De, Bermuda Bay okay give that a second two to dry and then go over with my embossing buddy to remove any static then I'm going to stamp the trim using Versamark and then use silver embossing powder then heat it to melt the powder. Then I can use the tree punch to punch that out um, then I need to stamp a sentiment okay so I'm using a merry little wish and I want Bermuda Bay ink again just ink him up and stamp him And then this time I'm going to punch him out using the word window punch. There we go. Okay, 
Now I need to add dimensionals to the reverse. And that's ready to go on my box. Now we can put our decoration onto our box. So if you remove the backing from the dimensionals and centre that on the middle triangle and then our sentiment is just going to go across our tray like that. Then we can glue our box together. Now we put the glue on these two side tabs. So just hold that in position for a second. Okay, so to close the box, just squeeze the side with the rounded off points and then give it a little push and our box is complete. Thank you for joining me today.